Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you want to design and build a beautiful website, you can do it all in one place with Squarespace. studio vlog this week I have quite a few things so I really do have to get started today but I'm gonna quickly run through them with you and obviously things will be added throughout the week la 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 this week I'm focusing on finishing my Newcastle write-ups festival presentation a few people have asked me like where they can watch it or if they can attend but it's actually a video presentation first of all like a lot of the author talks this year are gonna be video stuff and like zoom calls because of COVID and the restrictions that are now happening in New South Wales which is the state that I live in but mine was always um, a video presentation because I kind of wanted to see if I could pitch that to a writers festival as opposed to traveling being out of the studio for a few days and then talking in front of an audience and it doesn't make me super comfortable and then I'm like anxious for like a week leading up to it I will be working on that this week because it needs to be done Monday next week today I'm just gonna try and write the script for that and then throughout the week I'll film it edit it add animations add illustrations blah 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 I also am preparing for my next store drop which is happening very soon I just have one more item to go I've got um, to check one sample order it and wait for it to come and then I can like announce when it's gonna happen because I'm, I've got a lot of products I'm very excited about. It's very minimal stuff to be done for that. And then I have a new illustration brief which I'm really excited about. I will go through the brief and create some thumbnail sketches and then throughout the week refine those sketches and send off my idea because it needs to be done in the next three weeks. I will also be hopefully making time for personal work because I found that it's really lifted me up. So at least I want to do some sketching or sort of experimentation with gouache today if I have time. But I'm just trying to make sure that I put it in my schedule so that it actually gets done because it's important to like make time for personal work. Let's get started. more to-do list from my last draft. I think they were really popular and I really like using them so I'm just going to say that other people would like them too. Oh, I love seeing the way people use them. Like the way people organize their days. So this is them. And I also got a sample for a new notepad, a little slightly smaller one that's more generalized. It's not really like how to lay out the day. It's just like a cute gridded one inspired by some vintage gridded paper that I have. So here we have all of the different Samples. I do like the thicker one, but it's not necessary and I think the pad will be too Rigid if I do get that. I'm so drawn to this yellowed paper because it really looks like the gridded paper that I was inspired by to create this pad. So we've got space for a title or a date. We've got this beautiful gridded paper, which I'm like, should I lighten this up? I'll see after I write on it if I, if I need to lighten it up. We've got a little tiny mood tracker here. So cute. And then for a little peach. I'm gonna draw on this one because I really really want this one and if it's not good I'll try the others. But let's see. Tomato and then you 
already. I tried to. Am I the latest? Like in the movie? It's a different type of ratatouille. That's like something else. I guess we'll have to buy a mandolin. Yeah, such a cute movie. I know, so good. Surprise me. What was that crazy theory? Oh, this is mother, but I don't think so. What, what? That Antonigo's mother was the one that Remy oh, the was living with. Yeah, but it's not because we, we double checked and the house is different. It would be cool because it's like, does he hate Gusto because he, his mother watches him or something? It's interesting. When you feel down and out. Nothing seems right It's like you're walking through a cloud Lay it all on me Raindrops roll down your cheeks When life turns out a little different than your dreams Lay it all on me Give the sweet boy a treat. Gentle care. Come. Sit. This way. Up. High five. He is an angel. Isn't he? Stretch. Oh. Jessica Bull. Wish I could take your lips with me on the road wherever I'd be. I'd kiss you goodnight in a far off moonlight. I wish I could take your lips with me, listen to your little voice sing along with the radio, a song that someone else wrote, but I don't care. Just need you here I wish I could take your eyes with me Show you all the things I've seen My favorite Mexican bar Open air the big bright stars Wish I could take your eyes so blue My second favorite part of you Shrimp mail is here. These are so cute. Let's open. Hi. Excuse me, I'm trying to film an opening here, my Tom. Oh, okay, we'll do it like this then. No, don't hurt me. You have this. Cute Rizzo prints. Ooh. Oh, stickers. 
<laughs> That's funny. Excuse me. No. Don't eat, don't eat it. No, it's mine. <laughs> it's the postman driving away. He just gave it to us over the counter. I mean, over the bar. Over, what do you call this? These are hackers. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Two meals in one day. Hi, Mars. Down. Today I've got a few things to do. So I've got feedback for my sketches that I did for the napkin designs and I've got a couple things to do for that. I need to refine my sketches and finalize a color palette to send off to them before I do start doing the final artwork. I always want to make sure my clients have enough time to like feedback so that we don't have to be doing changes in final artwork or to minimize the amount of feedback in final artwork because it's harder to change that. I also need to tidy up which I think I'll do first. I've got a vlog to edit and I need to shoot my store images at some point but that might be tomorrow because I, I expect the the napkin stuff to take me all day, but we'll see. We'll see. We can make it only if we try. Sweet baby, you got the sweetest kisses alive. I'm not gonna argue. It's just everything I'm not willing to do. Take me home. GJ's. I thought you wanted to go into Machi Machi. I think that was you that said that. <laughs> Alright, we can do that. Yes. Take me home. Newcastle Writers Festival, that was today. I totally forgot. Okay, okay, time to get into my presentation outfit. <sighs> mm, this feels a little too serious. I think I'm gonna change back to the other outfit. Much better. Come, 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 come. Let me show you something. Come, 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 come. This is my studio. This is where I do all of my work. I have a big set of drawers, I have a big table, and lots and lots of books. But do I need all that to be an illustrator? No way. All you really need to be an illustrator is something to draw with and something to draw on.
Making a book is just like this. Lots of lines, turn shapes, turned into pictures. Throw in a bit of colour and tie it all together and make something even better. enjoy the rest of the Newcastle Writers Festival. Thank you so much for having me. And I hope you draw something really awesome soon. Goodbye. Wait, no, do it again. Ready, ready, ready. Let's get started. <laughs> boop, boop, beep, boop, boop. I probably like do it with like actual sound effects. I have a big set of drawers. <laughs> Sometimes drawing around something. <laughs> People. <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Do it again. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> and lots and lots of, oh, one more time. No! <laughs> and, <laughs> and <laughs> oh God, framing, wow. Okay, surely that's good. <sighs> good enough, it's a bit crooked, but that'll have to do. Hello everybody, today I feel a bit sleepy because I have not been sleeping well. I had like a week of no sleep, almost like one or two hours a night maximum. And then I slept a little, now I'm like sleepless again. I don't know if it's just the state of the world, the state of like personal stuff, like family things. But I have some stuff to do today, so I'm gonna try and get through it. I have myself a bubble tea, which always helps get me through. I've got some stuff on the napkin designs today. So the client's really happy to sign off on two of the designs and then had questions about the third design. And usually I don't do three rounds of sketches. Usually I do a concept sketch, a refined sketch, and then address any feedback that they have in the final artwork. But I think I will do a third sketch just for one of the concepts, just to make sure we're on the same page and give the, the client like the opportunity to sign up fully because it'll save me work down, down the line. Um, and it's gonna be a composition sketch. It's not gonna be super high detail or anything like that. Ease their mind and then in by extension ease my mind that they're happy. I'm launching my store soon. Maybe by the time you see this, I will have already launched it and it will still be open. I don't know, you'll have to check. But yeah, I'm a bit tired today. So sorry if it's a bit low energy. Okie dokie, so this is what I've come up with. This is super, super rough, like a lot rougher than the other sketches I was doing. This is purely just to show like scale and composition to finally get that approved and hopefully get started on the final artwork soon. So I'm always happy to work with clients on like what they want because in the end, like it's a better solution for them and I'm happy to find like, to be able to find a middle ground, something that I'm really happy with, something they're really happy with because that's just the best projects and like that. <laughs> it is so sunny in here. I was not gonna start on final artwork today. I don't know why I thought that I wasn't, but I do have like approval for two of them. So I think I might start that and start like getting into the nitty gritty of the final artwork just to see if any like stuff comes up with like style, just cause this isn't my typical style. So I think I'm gonna put some music on and just like try and get get into it and like, sorry, it's really sunny. I started my spring playlist like a month early, but if you guys have upbeat songs that you like, that you think will be good for my spring studio mix playlist, let me know, cause I'll put it in, the ones that I like that is. I still have like visual attachments to certain types of music just from like what I was doing at the time. For example, when I was listening to The Black Parade by My Chemical Romance, I was also driving through New Zealand with my parents and also at home reading like a series of unfortunate events. And I love that. I feel that way about other projects. Like there's, so I love to do that. It's almost like investing in future nostalgia. Well, it, it literally is. And yeah, that's it. I'm just gonna get started. But what should I listen to? I'm gonna listen to Emu music. to get my needle because what if it's painful and what if they laugh at me <laughs> I just got my vaccine in one of those buildings Sean's still in there so I'm waiting in the park how'd you go Sean 
Oh, what a tough girl. But anyway, my arm hurts now. Yeah. Does yours? No. That's it, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. I want to do a Q&A as always, but first let's say thank you to Squarespace. Thank you Squarespace. I'm about to do a huge store drop. You would have seen me preparing in the last few vlogs for it and it is coming. It is coming in like two days as of when I'm filming this. So I'm really excited and nervous. So I've been using Squarespace for my website, my blog, my portfolio and my store for like I actually don't actually know how many years. I think it's been since 2014 and I love it and I've never looked back and that's why you should use Squarespace. <laughs> Something that I really love, like I'm pretty lazy when it comes to content creation and like capturing things in some ways. Always want to sh just shoot it on the device that I have like in my hand. So what I've really loved lately is using the app to upload stuff to my store listings and using the app to check things like analytics and store orders and stuff like that. I know that Chris uses the app when he's fulfilling orders. Basically there's always going to be a barcode on your shipping orders and you can scan it straight on the app and it it will fulfill the order for you and send a shipping notification everything we're pretty well versus squarespace and we love it we love it so much if you haven't tried squarespace yet go to squarespace.com slash very little peach you'll get a free trial and 10 percent off your first purchase need i say more okie dokie let's get started on the questions i actually have quite a few i'm going to try and be succinct i've never been able to be succinct in my whole entire life but i'm going to try and be succinct today. So the first one is, Sean, a question about style for you. Would you say your fashion evolved linearly? linearly? <laughs> Would you say that your fashion evolved linearly <laughs> with your art over the years? Did exploring one form of style ever inform and change the other? Because I'm a big fan of all of it. Kath sending warm energy from so-called Vancouver, Canada. Thank you for the warm energy. I'm actually quite cold right now. That's why I'm wearing a jumper. As my style got more colorful and I, and I had a really decisive color palette and really directive themes in my work, I think I do shop according to that. Like I definitely incorporate my, the color palette of my work into my clothes. And I think it goes that way first. It's a lot easier to put pen to paper or paint to paper and then when you see something, you're like, oh, that's the color. Also, I want to apologize for my clothes today. We got vaccinated today, so I just wanted to wear something comfortable. And thank God I did because we had to wait a long time. And now my arm hurts. But Rocket's arm doesn't hurt, so who's going to die? Which one? Vote. <laughs> Comment below who's going to die. <laughs> also, I don't want to make light of COVID victims. Sorry. I laugh because it's scary. Hey, would you ever collab with a fashion brand to bring your designs or patterns to life in the market? Or are you more focused on making clothing or tangible products for your own store? Would definitely be all over a smock dress with apples on or something. <laughs> <laughs> sending lots of love from rainy England. I love how people send their weather to me. I love that. The focus is always the store because I have complete control and we can control like things like manufacturers, the price point, what it looks like. There's no restrictions. It's all like our own restrictions, which I really love. But I would definitely collaborate with another brand, depending on the brand, of course, if it's something that we can't make. Like, I don't think I can make custom garments. I don't think I, I don't know how to design things like that. So I would collaborate with a person or a brand to do stuff like that. Just because like sizing is hard and like making sure that things are really flattering for more than just t-shirts is really difficult. So I think things like tote bags, things like t-shirts, socks, stuff like that, where it's like, pretty like ill-fitting clothing and stuff that doesn't require special sizing definitely we will do ourselves obviously always open to like be commissioned by brands to do stuff like that but I would love to do a collection with someone that would be really cool because I love clothes and I, I think that shows with how I express my style in both my clothes and my work it's always fun to work with people that can make making stuff that you could never make by yourself easy if that makes sense when writing bandits in zoom what came first the art and character design or the written concept for me, it's never the written concept. For me, but well, I mean, never is in like I had two books, so <laughs> there's only two times. I've got other story ideas and it's always visuals that come first. Like it's always one visual. For Zoom, it was like that image of a solar system. It wasn't exactly what it is in the book, but it was the idea that imagine a sol our solar system, but every planet is an animal. And then I started thinking of like, oh, I wasn't very good at science and not very interested. And I think that would be a really cool way to teach kids the order of the planets to make them more memorable. And also the size of the planets based on the size of each animal. From there, it was just like, okay, how do we explore this solar system? And then I created like the main character who acted as like a vehicle for the narrative if that makes sense and for bandits it also started with a single image it's, it's always like a painting idea that I just can't have it stand alone I have to explore it so for bandits it was I imagined this girl 
riding a giant raccoon with a mask. I love the idea of um, the girl wearing a mask and the raccoon having a natural mask. And then obviously like they had a sack because I, I was like, oh, they're bandits because they're both wearing masks. And then I started to think like, what is in the sack? And I was like, for some reason, I was just like apple cores. And I was like, but why? Why do they have apple cores? And I remember um, when I pitched Zoom, I bought that drawing to the meeting and Hachette actually wanted to sign both books at once because they loved both ideas, which I was so stoked with, but I just didn't know about the publishing process. So I just waited until after Zoom was published and I was like, would we like to move forward on this? And they luckily said yes, because I love Bandits so much. Like I love, I love Zoom, but I love Bandits. Bandits is like, I'm way more proud of it. I have grown so much because of it. And I just love the characters and stuff in it too. Hi, Sean. I was wondering if you work set hours every day or what sort of schedule has worked for you as a self-employed person. Also, would you say that having an agent like Chris has helped you find more work and bigger clients? Thank you so much. Your videos and artwork always brighten my day. Thank you so much. I don't really work set hours, especially when we were living and working in the warehouse. But now that we live and work separately, we tend to come to the studio around 10 o'clock, like 10 a.m. But I don't really have a, a set number of hours. I do try and leave at a reasonable hour, especially now because we have Tonka. So we come in at 10, Tonka's already eaten his breakfast, his dry and his wet breakfast. And then we try and get home around six to feed Tonka because that's his dinner time. Sometimes it will be a little later because we just have heaps of work on. Um, but I, we do try and keep it to that. And it's not really for the work sake, it's more for Tonky's sake because the boy needs to eat. Trust me, when you wake up and you sit again in your chest and yelling at you, or when you get home and he's like in the kitchen being like, I'm ready for my food, the boy needs to eat. The second part of the question is also, would you say having an agent like Chris has helped you find more work and bigger clients? So Chris is not like a typical agent. Like it's not like, he doesn't generally go out and get me work, if that makes sense. He manages the work that comes to us. He did actually get me that recent job, which you saw me working on in this log, which is like the seafood one. But generally we work with the, the clients that come to us. We're really lucky that people want to work with us and we, we have enough work to sustain us. So that's why I kind of refer to him more as my producer because he's, he's kind of at every touch point of my business, whether it be the store, personal stuff, all the client work. He doesn't bring in the bigger clients. Like he doesn't go out and get those bigger clients and bring them to me, but he does manage my work in such a way that I'm able to make time to work with work on bigger projects with big, bigger clients and also so that um, the whole process is more professional and I don't have to worry about contracts as much. I don't have to worry about chasing people and chasing emails and stuff like that. Like it's, it's made the whole process easy. I don't like life without Chris, not, not into it. So Chris, if you're watching this, I know, I know you watch this. <laughs> I know you love me. <laughs> No, but I love Chris and like he's such a big part of my work and I we've worked together for like seven or eight years now and it's just been like a joy to have him like grow with me and yeah, I love it. Would death recommend, but please don't steal Chris from me. Thank you. <laughs> have you ever struggled with being taken seriously as a professional, either due to gender, I'm going to do this for the bracket, either due to gender, race or your art style and how do you deal with it? I don't know. Like I'm sure maybe, but like, I don't know about it. It's not been overt. Something that I do think though is like art style wise, I think my work is very cute. It's very silly and playful. And I think that that may not be taken seriously perhaps, but it hasn't really bothered me because the, the business I'm in is like this carving out my own space online. I'm not really reliant on gatekeepers of the industry. And I've been lucky enough not to be kept out of the industry. So I've been able to create like a very safe space for my work and myself and find like my audience, which has been awesome. Like couldn't have done it without them because it's like motivating. Not only that, it like proves to people that my work is palatable and that someone out there likes it besides me and my mom and Rocket, you know what I mean? I would say I haven't faced a lot of that, but it's also just because I've powered through and found my own solutions in spite of any, any obstacles that may have been presented to me. Like I've never been, no one's ever been like, let, no gallery has ever been like, let me represent you or anything like that. But I don't see that as an obstacle call. I kind of am just like, we, we run our own shows. Sometimes we rent spaces for those shows. Sometimes we don't even do shows. We've been doing books and store drops in place of those shows. And it's like really, really fun. So I don't know. My advice for people that do face obstacles like that is create a community. You will be able to find your community. There's like so many people in the world and you are not so crazily unique that you are the only person that finds your work like fun and palatable and lovely. Do you know what I mean? How did you set up pricing when you started as a young freelancer? How do you know your worth as an artist and, 
and become more confident around clients, aka how did you manage not to get exploited? It is a real struggle I have at the moment. I think at the start, I took on work that was either like really cheap or like had non-monetary value, if that makes sense. But that I think comes with just being young and inexperienced. I'm gonna share a story with you, which I've shared on that 5 to 9 podcast, which I definitely have recommended to you guys a lot of times. So I'm sorry if you've already heard it. And I probably already said it before, but when I was a youth, when I first started out and I had a Tumblr account and I was selling paintings on my Tumblr account for like $10 or whatever, my mom found out she was like on my Tumblr because she was stalking me online or something. She's probably watching this now as well, probably stalking me still. So she saw I was selling my work for like 10, 15, $20 for like A4 paintings. And I was at this stage, I was just like playing with watercolor. I was like, I just want to make stuff. And like the fact that people were buying it, I was like, yay. But mama pulled me aside in the kitchen. She was like, Sean, you can't be selling your work for $20. You need to put your prices up. I was like, I don't care about that. I was like, I don't care about money. I just want to be happy in life. And my mom was just like, honey, you can have both. And I was like, oh didn't think about that. It was almost like a light switch moment. So I raised my prices. And then now we just raise prices based on like availability and how busy we are and how big the client is and how much I want to do the work and stuff like that. We adjust it for that. And I think with time comes confidence. Sometimes you just need someone to be willing to pay you really well for you to be confident in pricing your work really well, if that makes sense. I would say always price it a little bit more than you want to. Then you're like, if you're nervous to price things up, just do a little bit more. The worst they can do is just want to negotiate with you. If they really want to work with you, they will work to, to find a medium price that will work for both of you. So don't be afraid to ask for money because oftentimes people will say yes. And if they don't say yes, they're just willing to negotiate. I've never had someone be like, no. A lot of the time they're just like, oh, actually they'll explain that this is their budget. And either you can be like, sure, I can work to that. Or you can be like, actually it needs to be a little bit more. Or you can just be like, nah, sorry, I can't work with that. Like some people I guess don't have the privilege to just know that work is coming in. So they'll probably accept it, which is something that's difficult. But whenever you get to the point where you have too much work and you can't breathe, raise your prices. Hey Sean, I've been making art during this lockdown and I'm so happy with it when I'm finished with it. I'd post it and after a few days, I'd hate it and regret sharing it. Any tips for growing confident in your own work? I hope you, Rocket and Tonka, are doing well with this New South Wales lockdown. Good thing the sun's been out and spring's coming. True, true, true. Now that it's getting warmer, it's a lot more tolerable to be in lockdown, I have to say, but it's still a bit of a bummer, you know? Tips in growing confident in your own work. I think once your, your work becomes so authentically you, it's gonna become less embarrassing and regretful. I still have pieces that after like a few weeks, I'm like, oh, I don't really, I'm not really a fan of this anymore. But the key is just to not worry about it. A lot of the time people aren't going back and scrolling back and being like, lol, look at this loser. <laughs> like no one is doing that. No one has the time to go through your whole entire life and your archive online. You're the only one worrying about it. They're only really seeing it when you post it and they're probably not thinking about it afterwards. And I'm sorry to say that, but also don't worry. People are like that with me too. I'm not saying that you're crap and I'm not crap. We're all crap. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that kind of get used to that. Don't don't be so ashamed. Like people understand that there's growth. People understand your taste changes and stuff like that. I think it's just about making work. And if you're unhappy with it, use that hatred of your own work to like drive yourself to make more work. Make sure that you feel like your most recent piece is to your taste because that way you're just going to constantly grow and grow and grow. And I think that's like a good type of healthy hate of your work, if that makes sense, or like healthy dislike of your stuff. It uses the, use your shame for pr productivity. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Chris is calling me. Hello, I'm filming a Q&A. Okay, should I call you later? No, you, I'm just letting you know you're, you're on my Q&A. Do we have, you know those plastic sleeves that you put the international addresses in? Do we have any of those left at the studio? Or oh, no? I'll have to check. I'll check after I film. Yeah, cool, okay. Okay, cool. I'll definitely be packing up the packaging for you anyway, so I'll find them if, I, if they're here. Yeah, cool. All right. Cool, cool. Yeah. All right, see ya. What did you think of the Tokyo Olympics? Did you get any official merchandise? Can I just say, I don't really watch that much of the Olympics. I just like the merch and I like seeing like the mascots and stuff. Like, yes, I bought merch. Did I watch it? No, I watched one thing or two things. I'm a poser. I'm an Olympics poser. I, I watch the highlights. I see highlights, but I'm not sitting around waiting for things. When I was younger, I loved watching the swimming because at the 2000s Olympics, sorry to talk so much about the 2000s Olympics, but during the 2000 Olympics, that was like the golden era for Australia. And that was like my first Olympics that I really watched. And so we had Ian Thorpe and Grant Hackett and like all these other amazing swimmers. And we'd come like first, second, first, second, every time. So I just assumed that Australia always won. Like there was no concept where we didn't win at swimming. So I'd always be watching being like, yeah, like I just knew we were gonna win. Like it was just really weird. And then I realized one day that 
no, that's not how it works. Like other people can be good too. Maybe that's why I love the 2000 Olympics too. It's like, cause it was here. We like would go watch gymnastics. Like our school would have tickets to the gymnastics or something. We'd go watch that. It was so fun. Hi Sean, hope you're doing good. I just wanted to know what your favorite snack or beverage is at the moment. Well, I'm glad you asked. I have a new favorite bubble tea and I must share it with you. Well, let me tell you the story. Once I went to Nate's house, he bought me this bubble tea. I was like, ugh, this place. I've walked past this place and not been interested in them at all before because I thought they didn't have fruity tea, but it was a plum green tea from Machi Machi. And now it's my favorite one ever. Like now, and we have one near the studio. I'm so excited. So Machi Machi, if you're watching, please allow me to have a large plum green tea. Why can't I have a large plum green tea? Why can I only have a medium plum green tea? That's just like, seems a bit annoying. Hmm? Hmm? But anyway. Maybe if they're watching, don't complain. Oh, yoo-hoo, Machi Machi. <laughs> Can I have some free Machi Machi? I love it. <laughs> the plum green tea is so good. It's like so fresh. The jasmine um, tea is so flavorful, so delicious, more than anything. The pearls are amazing. And there's a little dried plum at the bottom and it's so delightful. And do you know what I do? I get one, usually I get no sugar with my um, bubble teas, but because it's only available in regular, I get less sugar. And then when I get to the studio, I'll cut open the top and I'll like messily pour it into another cup, half, half. And then I'll fill both cups up with water and I have two bubble teas for the price of one bubble tea. That is a life hack for you. Probably too much of an answer. You didn't care that much, but guess what? I care. I care for you to know about my bubble tea. I will always update you whenever I have a new bubble tea favorite. Rest assured, you will never be out of the loop. I would love a rundown of your favorite art supplies, what you reach for the most. Right now, when I'm going to do a traditional painting, I'm reaching for Liquitex acrylic ink. I'm reaching for Prismacolor Premier pencils, because I love them, and Archer's 600 GSM watercolor paper, cold press, 100% cotton, amazing, expensive, but Honestly, irreplaceable. Wish it was replaceable, because it's very expensive. Also like lead pencil wise, I just didn't mention this. HB pencils suck, 2B and above only. The darker, the softer, the better. Hi Sean, first of all, I absolutely love you. I've got a question about starting out as a digital artist and brands. One, I've been trying to get into digital art for some time now, but it's hard to draw with fingers on a tiny phone. Do you maybe have a quick tip to ease this process? Two, what's the story of how you came to work with Samsung? That's huge. And you're my inspiration for one day working with them. How interesting. Well, this is going to seem like a bit of an ad, but my phone has a built-in stylus that comes out of the phone. So in my stories, when I draw things, this is what I'm using, you know? I'm using this to do intricate bubble writing and I'm using this to do arrows and stuff like that. Um, but if you don't have a note, because I don't think they're releasing notes anymore, but if you don't have a note, I would buy a little stylus because I understand like, it can be really, really hard to draw with your fingers and also unnatural, you don't, you're not used to drawing with your fingers. So I would get like a stylus, you can get pens that have styluses on the back, you just get a little one that you can carry around with you and you can use that to draw, because I used to do that too. It's not like pressure sensitive, like my S Penny thing, but, it's, but it will do the job in terms of like being natural to use to draw. Two, what's the story of how you came to work with Samsung? That's huge, okay. So with Samsung, they wanted to work with me on an influencer basis. And I, at that time I was like such a slave to Apple. I was like, oh, I don't know, like I haven't used Samsung before, so I don't feel like advertising it, which is how it is when I am not sure, like if I'm unsure about a company, I'm just like, no. And then they like contacted me a few other times. I was like, sorry, no. And then, and then they were just like, just come to an event. We'll have dinner. It was like a branded dinner event that my friend was organizing. And so I went to that and they're like, look, here's this phone, like use it for the night. And I used it and I was like, oh, it's pretty good. <laughs> like I, I had this predisposition to be like, Android is not good because I was just like in the ecosystem, if that makes sense of Apple. But then when I tried, I was like, the camera is so good on this phone. So I was like, okay, I will work with you. Like this phone is really good. And it was the, it was the note, it had the stylus and it was just worked so well for me to be able to draw on the go. Sorry if this isn't, I'm not trying to be an ad. I'm just telling you the exact process of my thinking. And so then I was like, okay, let's work together. So we worked together on like an influencer basis because I started using the phone and I haven't, I've used like my Samsung phone for like four or five years, four years maybe. And like, love it, love the stylus, love it. I don't know, the camera's amazing. I don't know how to explain it. It's just like a great phone. Um, and so I started working with them on an influencer basis. And then I would go to events, like whether it be like new releases, you go to events and stuff like that. I met some of the Samsung team and then they invited me to speak in New York um, 
at their global conference, which was very nerve wracking, can I just say? I was like such a mess. In that trip, I was like hanging out with someone that worked at Samsung rather than just through their agencies and stuff. And then eventually I, did, I worked more closely with them. And I think, I don't know how it happened, but I did video projects with them and I was doing stuff with me in it. And then the next time I was like, I wanna do stuff with models. Like I just kind of fell into directing these ads that we ended up doing like last year, which is really awesome, so fun. I loved not being in front of the lens because it, it makes it less stressful. I'm just only concerned with what I'm seeing and what I have in my storyboards and my shot list. I'm not like also being in it, worrying about like if my makeup's okay, worrying about if my eczema's like terrible or something like that. It's really, really fun. Participating in things. And if you want to work with a large company, put yourself in front of them whether it be create work with their products or create work that could be used by them um, and just to show that you can do stuff if they give you a brief excel at that brief be kind be generous and be like good at what you do and and I'm sure that you can continue that relationship I just feel like it's such silly advice because it's like of course you know to do that but that's just what it was I've been very fortunate to be able to work with large companies and have interesting briefs so I would love that for you. Hi, I love how everyone says hi to us and Tonky. Hi, hi, Sean Rocket and Tonk. Two part question. One, how are you feeling in life these days? I ask because you've had an exceptionally busy year in my opinion. Haha, <laughs> two, is there a project goal specific thing you've set out to do or interested in doing in the near future? I feel like you're always pushing yourself in so many ways. Anyway, sending you all the love. Thank you so much. I'm feeling good. I feel a bit like stressed right now because it's pre store drop, pre vlog release. And um, I've got like an Adobe, interview soon and I'm just like nervous about that. It's funny that you you think I've had an exceptionally busy year because when I think about my last year, I'm like, what have I done? Like, I don't know, it's been such a blur. Maybe that's because it's been busy or maybe it's just like, I'm, I don't know. I, just, I feel like people think I'm busier than I actually am. I don't know, I feel like just doing things. Two, is there a project goal specific thing you've yet to do or interested in doing in the near future? I would love to do more books. That, that, I mean, I've done books, but I would, haven't done a third book or a fourth book or a fifth book. I would love to do that. And also just like exploring my personal work a little bit more. And I think I have, I think you guys have seen me focusing on that in the last couple of vlogs, but I'd love to do that further and really just delve into it. There's just a lot of things. I would also love to do a lot of crazy like products for my store, not just like typical things like prints and stuff. I really want to go out and do objects and like wearables and just stuff that people can use in their everyday life to brighten their life up a little. Like that's what I want to do. Hi, Sean, how do you come up with ideas for your artwork? Do you dedicate time to brainstorm or do you just wait for inspiration to strike at any moment? My practice is pretty chaotic in that there's a lot of different things that I do. So I've got like my commercial work, my store drops, I've got video stuff, I've got my personal work. I don't know, it's just like a lot of different things. So I'm like zooming between each one. And when I get to the point where I have time for personal work or I've set aside time for personal work, I will usually have ideas. So I'm lucky in that way. But but if you find yourself with a lot of time, I would set aside time to, to do some dedicated concepting or dedicated sketching. Oftentimes when I'm doodling is when I come up with ideas or when I'm doing things that are not necessarily like, I'm going to sit down and have an idea because it's really hard to like, have true inspiration. It's usually in the most unexpected moments. Allow yourself breathing room so that you can have those ideas. And so that when you're ready to make artwork, you have ideas, if that makes sense. Hi, Sean, big fan of yours. I've just started my Instagram account for art and I'm wondering how did you grow your Instagram audience? Which social media did you pick up first? Thanks. So uh, let me take you back, back to the summer of 2010 where I started my Tumblr account. At the time, I just wanted to have a place to procrastinate instead of doing studying for my like final exams for year 12. Um, but then it became this like community and like this place where I would share drawings and like get feedback from people and like communicate with other artists I would never be able to meet. And it like became a big part of my life and has eventuated into being like on Instagram and on YouTube and stuff like that. I'm so lucky that I did that. I'm so glad I procrastinated for my exams. When it comes to growing my Instagram audience, I'm like kind of a relic. I've been around for a long time. Like I've been posting for like 10 years. I've been sharing everything for like 10 years. I have terrible advice because it's just like make stuff and share it. Make stuff and find beautiful ways to share it. And I'm sure eventually if you do it long enough, you'll find your people if that makes sense. Like I found you guys. I really believe in that. I could be like speaking from privilege of having been at the start of like Instagram and stuff like that. Um, but it hasn't been, it's never been like boom. There, there have been small little ups when it comes, when I post something that goes a little viral or whatever, like especially on in the Tumblr days, like being on the radar and stuff. There's been little blips of like increase in followers, but it's been a pretty steady growth. And I think that that's not very glamorous and it's not what really people want to hear, but just making stuff and working to find your people. That's what I would recommend. That is it. Thank you so much for watching. If, I, if I'm posting this on time, I may, 
I, I may have just released stuff in my store. So I've got new stuff in the store. You can go check it out now. The store will be open for two weeks from the release date, which is on the 29th. And we've got t-shirts, we've got to-do list pads, we've got memo pads, we've got new sticker packs, we've got some Bad Apple stickers, some of the jumbo stickers, we've got four new prints, we've got books and book bundles, and we've got backgrounds for phones, also tattoo tokens. But we just got lots of stuff, so check it out. If you have a friend that also wants something, I would recommend ordering together to save on shipping because it goes by weight tiers. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. You don't have to buy stuff from me. I already consider you watching being support. Thank you so much for being with me all this time. I love it. I really have to go toilet now, but I will see you very soon with a new video. And I hope you enjoyed this one and goodbye. Bye! Help, the man appears out of nowhere. I'm scared.